How do you load a swatch to a variation? My name is Stephen Pope and I'm the founder of my Amazon guy. In this video, we're gonna talk about how you get variations like this on a parentage to show a color instead of just the image of the product. So first thing I'm gonna recommend you guys do is pop on over to your inventory reports to get to here. You're gonna put your cursor on that top left hamburger menu. Scroll down and look at reports and go to inventory reports. On the report type that I'm gonna recommend you download, you wanna get the category listings report. If you don't see this on the dropdown, it's because you need to ask Amazon to enable it. And it's a beta feature, which is basically gonna download all of the data in your account. Uh, for those that have watched other catalog videos from me, you'll notice I start with this every single time because you need to back up your data before you do any parentage work or any other complicated catalog work. This will save you a lot of headache, and it's just a good best practice. To request this report, it's a simple ticket. You just go over to help support and uh, file a case and pretty much any case type, you just basically just have to ask for it. Can I get in the access to category listings report? Once you do that, you hit request and you'll see it show up as category listings report. Sometimes I forget and I download the all listings report. That's not the one you need. You want the category listings report. That's gonna pop up an Excel file that looks like this. Inside of here, um, we're gonna be able to look at some data and find out where the swatch exists. I'm gonna hold down Control F and I'm gonna type in swatch. Uh, too much data, so it's gonna take a second. We'll pause this. So I let that run and surprisingly, the CLR report does not have the swatch field. So we're gonna go on a little bit of a rabbit hunt here and see if we can track it down. So it's not on the CLR report. And what I did next was I went over to uh, the ad products via upload and I had some previous ones downloaded. So I had one for tumblers and water glasses and I hit generate templates. It, it, it's a little confusing when you get here, by the way. So when you click this, it, it, it moves the, the field up there and then you have to scroll back down for generate templates. So if that happens to you, that's why if you've never downloaded one before, just simply type in the category you're in, hit search, select it, then scroll down and hit generate template. So I went into that template. So the, the tumblers and water glass template, control F swatch, also not in this template, even though I have the advanced field selected, which was a huge bummer. I was like, what, what is going on with this? Well, so it turns out, I don't know why, but they've removed it from some of these templates. So I had to go digging even further and I went in to the category specific inventory files. I clicked that, that pulls up another window and I'm gonna scroll down and go to the home and decor kitchen garden furniture one. Uh, when you first load here, this is what it looks like, uh, a hot mess of information. Uh, but I've done this for so many years, I knew to scroll down to home. Uh, no matter what category you're in, you could probably get away with downloading the home one, but try and find whatever you might fit best in. So if you're in grocery or health or whatnot. And so I opened up that one, control F for swatch, and there it is. Finally, we found the swatch uh, column. So I actually got asked this question from one of my uh, coaching students over at myamazonguy.com slash coaching. They asked me this question. And so that's why I shot this video because it wasn't straightforward for me to figure out how to answer him. So I had to go do some research and it turns out they made some changes. So here is Amazon's definition of the swatch image URL. You can get to this by going to the data definitions tab of that file we just downloaded. The URL where an image of a color swatch from the product is located it gives you some information on what that can look like as well as a URL example. So if we went over to simple moderns listing right here and we took one of these swatches and simply right clicked it, open image in new tab, this is what it looks like. It's just a super small image. Um, now you could load this at a much bigger aspect ratio inside of the file. It's basically saying 72 pixels uh, or something like that minimum, maximum, all on the longest side there. So you can load it in as a URL. So if you need to load a swatch image in a template file, you will have to put it in URL format. One of the best ways to do that is to load it to your WordPress, your Shopify, Magento site, whatever it might be, and simply host the image there and then load it into the template like thus. Once you've done this one time, it's good to go. You don't have to worry about it a second time. So that's the nice thing 
Um, you could also load this to a Google Drive or an IMGUR website or another third-party image hosting site of some kind. But basically, you're just looking for a .jpg, um, .jpg URL, something along the lines of this. So when you go over to uh, the template itself, if all you do to load the swatch URL is this, you go to the SKU column, put the SKU in. So SKU123, we've got to enable editing here. SKU123, still have to enable editing again. There we go. Finally. All right, we're getting some errors. Fun stuff. I love doing catalog template work. SKU123 in the seller SKU. We're going to go back over to the swatch column and simply put in, uh, my, you know, myamazonguy.com slash whatever coaching.jpg, whatever it might be. And then the last column you need to fill in is the update column. And in here, we're going to switch this to partial update. The drop down never works, so you end up having to type this out. And you want to do it just like that partial update, capital P, capital. All right, they're giving me a little error here. Nice. All right, let's see what we can figure out with the drop down here. Let's see why they're giving me. Maybe I got to do partial update with an underscore. Nope. Okay. Well, I love how I can't fill that in and it won't tell me what's supposed to be valid. So we're going to go next over to the valid values tab and see if they made an update to this because they probably did. All right. So updates. And they have a ton. All right, so partial update should work just like that. Let's go back, try this one more time. We did a control V, that one worked. All right, so then we would save this file. Um, and then after we've saved the file, we would go back over to the inventory uploader page, which is here. Nope. All right, we're going to go back to inventory drop down. Um, we're going to go to the Upload your spreadsheet tab on the add products via upload page. In here, you'd browse for the Excel file, simply hit upload, and then you could you can see the upload status on this column once it goes through. And then you'll see record submitted, status done. You got a batch ID if you have to troubleshoot anything, and you can download the processing summary. The way that you're gonna know if you're successful is if the image here, the swatch image, gets replaced from the regular product like this, and it starts to look like a color. Now, there are questions on whether you should even do this. It depends on the product. Um, I've seen when it's just like a basic color difference that a swatch will perform better. But when we're showing like an entirely different view of a product or a style, um, I'll give you an example of some of my wine glasses. Sometimes it makes sense to show the style name and the style name will not show the product. It will actually show the text. So if you want mom, dad, dad, or different style, something like that, you can put it in here. In other instances, it's going to make the most sense to do it as a color variation, but actually show the product. So here we've got Red Mushroom, we've got Blouser, Luigi, and Red Mario. And I think that showing the product here is a superior uh, methodology versus showing the swatch. But I do agree with Simple Modern's choice to do it with just the swatch because they have a firm, straight-up color um, and that's actually more important. It's easier for the consumer to understand the differences here, and that's why I would actually follow suit in doing what they, they have here. Um, so that's how you're going to know it's going to look correctly. The last thing I'm going to show you, though, is if you go into an actual parentage, so I hit edit on this parentage right here, uh, and that brings us up over to this variation tab like this. You'll notice in here um, that there is not a way to load a swatch onto the parentage via manual inventory changes. It only works via a template upload. And as you saw me struggle today to try and locate how to do that, they've made some changes uh, and you have to download a regular um, category flat file. You can't just do the category specific ones. And so non-specific categories, what you're looking for, and you're gonna have to load it via the swatch URL. Um, so it is a little bit more complex process, usually not worth doing compared to the other 100 things you can do. But if you're going to do it, that's how you do it. So if you like this video, hit that like button and check out my other catalog troubleshooting videos. I have hundreds of them. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button.